Not everybody's going to agree with this, and that's okay. Pardon the road noise. I'm on the road. That's why there's road noise. That's how that happens. Is Aptera's timing right? Now, Aptera didn't necessarily choose their timing with everything. You know, we thought maybe we would have our solar-powered electric car in 2021, uh, then maybe 22 and 3 and 4. Now we're learning that the first ones will roll out in 2025. And it seems like from everything I've heard so far from the team at Aptera that it'll be just a few really. It sounds like that'll be just a few. And I don't know what a few means. It could be a thousand. I don't know. It could be 2,000. But whatever the rollout will be, it's not going to be like a global, you know, 100,000 vehicle rollout in 2025. So now here's the part I think that some people will disagree with because a lot of people have already said, hey, listen, enough's enough. I can't keep waiting. I got to get a car. Uh, this is why I think this timing for Aptera of a real serious ramp up of maybe 2026 is perfect. It, because when Aptera launched the, uh, the Soul and the, um, you know, the, the, the rolling prototypes, and they made the video and they said, hey, look, we're back. It's been a long time since 2008. Let's get back to work. We made some improvements. We're going to be able to do this with solar. Uh, we we're all very excited and ready to go that day. You know, every one of us probably listening to this and certainly the guy talking about it would have loved to have taken delivery of his Aptera then. Uh, but that's us. That's only a few thousand people. And even today, there's over 47,000 pre-orders of people that would be like, yeah, give it to me now. That's still a small number. So what has to happen before Aptera can become a company that's sustainable, that can last, that can go global, that can serve the greater purpose of uh, green travel for real, you have to have EV adoption on a massive scale first. You have to. That's why Aptera's timing of coming full on to the market at the end of five into 26 is perfect. And here's the things that I'm seeing in my neighborhood here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that is paving the way for Aptera. First, uh, Kia and Hyundai with their EV6 and Ionic line have really gotten a foothold uh, in the market and They've got great lease programs. These lease programs allow, are allowing people to dip their toes in the EV water for very little money and find out if they like it. And what they're going to find out, the same thing I found out, first time I drove an EV was I'm never going to drive another gasoline car uh, until I, you know, ever, ever. I, I, they, they might take me to the grave in one. I can't control that. But as far as it depends on me, I'll never be driving in another gasoline car. So now those people are learning that. Now that's just new car buyers with excellent credit. What about the rest of people? Well, now you can buy a Chevy Bolt EUV or a Chevy Bolt EV for ins used for an insanely good deal. Like some of these are going for $10,000. Some a touch less, but you gotta probably have some kind of a deal with the government tax break to get it less than that. But even in Michigan now, uh, a used EV, you can still get a tax credit for, which is which is kind of new and fancy around here. So if it's a one owner used EV, you can get, I think it's $4,000 as a tax credit. And don't quote me on that, and I'm not gonna look it up now because I'm driving. But because now you can buy used EVs at a price that allows you again to dip your toes in the water, get in an EV and find out that you love it. And with the Chevy Bolt especially, a used Chevy Bolt will make anybody an EV lover. It's zippy, it's quick, it's, it's roomy enough up front anyway, not super roomy in the back unless you get the EUV, that's better. Uh, it has paddles where you can increase your uh, regenerative braking. Uh, it's, it's just a cool car and it's got legitimate range, like 250 miles, but for real. Not like my Nissan Leaf that says, yeah, you get 107 miles and sometimes you get 60 miles. Sometimes you get 80, sometimes you get 100. You know, it depends on so many factors. But you get 250 miles with your Chevy Bolt. So people now, for the first time today, essentially are starting to taste the EV and deciding they like it. So that means mass, in my opinion, for whatever that's worth, 
mass adoption is right around the corner. Over this year, what is it now, 2024, the beginning of 2025. So now when you get to 2026 and people are able to see the Aptera on the road and they're already in love with driving an EV, it's not like it is now when they're trying to go from, oh, and by the way, I need to mention the Chevy Blazer and the Chevy Equinox because they're all over my neighborhood now and those are outstanding electric vehicles, 300 miles range, somewhat affordable to, to a lot of people. Uh, anyway, I'm going to talk about more about those in another video because I think those two vehicles especially uh, are going to lead to mass adoption, which Tesla, although I see Teslas everywhere, uh, it's still kind of this weird thing that you either like Tesla or you don't, and I don't understand that. Uh, I think it's a fantastically built car. For me, it's I've never been able to afford a Tesla. And, and now that's going to change. I think you're going to see some prices with competition are going to have to come down. But, okay, I, I, go, I want to go back to Aptera. So now I'm driving in an EV, which I love for a year, year and a half, and I see an Aptera, and it's electric. Now it's not as big of a jump. It's not like going from a, well, let's do a whatever car, Chevy Equinox gas car, which you love. And it's a great little SUV, crossover size car, a great seller. And you see in Aptera, it's going to be uh, all kinds of new things for me. Three wheels, solar tech, two-seater, and an EV. And I haven't committed yet to making the EV jump. So for me, I'm going to look at it and say, what kind of weirdo it, it would drive that? It'll probably be me driving that when people say that. But if I'm already in the EV, I'm already driving electric, I get it. I get that it's better for everybody for me to drive EV and, by the way, a lot more fun than driving a gasoline car or a diesel car and a lot more affordable and I'm not taxing the grid because I've already learned I'm charging at my house at night and all the myths about there being extremely heavy is nonsense uh, other than the ones that are just stupid like the Hummer uh, or vehicles like that. They are ridiculously heavy. Uh, so are gasoline Hummers but the electric Hummer is ridiculous uh, weight. But normal EVs weigh what Toyotas weigh. It's not a big deal that you think it is. Once we know that, now I see an app here, I'm like, oh, look at that EV. Oh, two-seater, uh, like a Corvette. Uh, three wheels, that ought to be interesting. Let me drive that and see about it. And then mass adoption of the, the uh, Aptera can follow the mass adoption of electric vehicles. So that's why my take, uh, which some of you I hope will disagree with me and put it in the comments because that's how I learn. It's from you disagreeing with me and letting me know what I probably have wrong. But from what I'm seeing in my neighborhood here in Michigan and from what I'm seeing about Aptera's pacing, although it's not what I wanted, and this is not pandering by the way, no one's sending me a dollar or moving me up in line to get my Aptera because I say this. I think they accidentally landed on Aptera time, the right time for solar powered electric vehicle of the future. So no credit goes to Aptera because they would have done this two years ago. They told us they would have. Um, but good for all of us, including Aptera Motor Company, that it's landing on the right time. That's my take. This is Chad Drive the Lightning, the positively, always positive charged EV channel. And our members, you keep the wheels turning. We thank you all. Those who have purchased merch from us in the Mug Club, we really appreciate you as well. Bob Newchell, you bought us coffee. Uh, and everybody who's bought us coffee lately, you, you're all very much appreciated. And that's it. I'm going to uh, log off. Don't buy us any more coffee, though. I'm ending that program. But for those of you that have in the past, we really do appreciate it. It helps a lot. If, you'd, if you want to support us, we would recommend becoming a channel member. And as a channel member, you're going to... Um, just be extra awesome. So you get a little extra awesome next to your name. You can tell people, I'm a lightning driver because I support Drive the Lightning. And then they'll say, wow, you must be a really special person. They'll give you a hug. Uh, maybe they'll buy you a Diet Coke. Who knows? Uh, because you're just that kind of special type person who belongs here with us at DTL. All right, have a great whatever it is. Hey, it's afternoon here. Whatever it is there, I hope it's a great one. Thank you.